What's up? It's Jolie, and welcome back to Fridays here on Daily Diabetics. This week's video theme is our scariest low blood sugar story, and I honestly don't have, like, a super scary low blood sugar story or a frustrating low blood sugar story where something happened and I wasn't able to treat it, but I do have a scary high blood sugar story, and so that is what I'm going to share with you guys this week. So why don't we just jump right into this week's video? So this started actually the night before this whole incident happened, but so I believe it was sometime in April, I went to a concert and I remember right after dinner my blood sugar spiked and it w didn't ever go over 300, it was just in the high 200s and I could not get it to come down and I didn't know why, I was so confused, I was like why is this happening, it, this was the entire concert, I was stacking insulin like no other and thought that like when the main act came on that my blood sugar was going to go low and this was an all GA floor show and so I did not think I was going to be able to get back to my seat if I had to leave so I stopped giving myself insulin and then finally like at the end of the show I came down and I remember going to bed at like 112 which I was like perfect finally I came down and I was super scared that I was going to continue going down because I was stacking insulin all night long at this concert the entire night like every 30 minutes I was giving myself probably two or three units of insulin and so my blood sugar should have come down from being in the 200s and it didn't and so then I went to bed I woke up my blood sugar was I think in like the 90s and so I was like awesome finally my insulin is working I don't need to change my pump site I'm fine and so then I was going to babysit my friend uh, one of my friends like nephews and we went and got lunch and I gave myself insulin before we left their house to go get lunch and so I gave myself insulin probably 20 to 25 minutes before lunch so I thought I was probably gonna go low because I was in probably the 140 range by lunchtime and so we went and got lunch I ate and then my blood sugar spiked above 300 and I was like what is going on so after I left to go to work from babysitting my friend's nephew I changed my pump site on my way to work and gave myself, I'm pretty sure I gave myself like nine units of insulin, I'm not gonna lie. And then I went and bought a whole bunch of Gatorade just in case, didn't drink any of it, got to work, my blood sugar was still super high. So I was like, I'm gonna change it again and I'm going to put a new vial of insulin in this pump site. So I did, didn't work. And I was like, what is going on? So then I was like, all right, I've, I've got to change to using a syringe. So I gave three different shots with my syringe and still didn't come down. I was working a concert because I work as an event staff um, um, with an event staff company here in Denver. And I was working at the gates and I was checking tickets. And I remember drinking like four of my Nalgene water bottles in less than an hour and I was like this is not good I have got to get my blood sugar down I don't know what I'm doing I really need to use the restroom and finally the medic that was right there was like are you okay you've been drinking a lot of water you just don't seem like you're right tonight because I usually work in first aid but at this venue I do take it taking and I work in first aid and so the medic kept asking me are you okay there's something wrong there's something wrong and I was like I looked at him at one point and he just saw how out of it I looked I was I wasn't even able to talk at this point my blood sugar was so high my Dexcom couldn't even read it it said high with two arrows going up so it was obviously above 400 and it was like this for over an hour and I kept giving myself insulin and it wasn't working and I didn't have any syringes left and so when I couldn't even walk I couldn't even really talk I finally was like I need to go down to the office and so I went down to our office and at this point I'm just bawling because I don't know what to do. I'm scared. I have never had this happen before. And one of the ladies I work with, her brother apparently is a type 1 diabetic and I didn't know that. And so she came down, she was trying to help me and I told her, I was like, I've taken twice as much insulin today than I have ever had in a day. So I don't know why my blood sugar is not coming down. She's like, alright, well why don't you check it with your um, glucose meter and see what it is because your Dexcom can't even read it. And it was, I believe, at like 579 or something like that. So out of control. I have no idea what's going on. And my Dexcom is still saying two arrows going up. 
So I'm really scared. I texted my boss who was there and I was like, could you please come to the office when you get a chance? And at this point he knew something was wrong. I was acting weird all night. So he comes down and he's like, what's wrong? And I was like, I don't know. I can't be here. I was like, can you please get me the medic? So the medic comes down. I ask him if he has any syringes. And if you guys don't know this, paramedics cannot give insulin. And so I had to do this myself. Um, but this guy, I'm not going to name any names or company or where I was working this night because I don't want this person to get in trouble. But I asked him if he had a syringe. He came down and he brought me the smallest syringe he had with the smallest needle. Okay, the needle was like this long. I am not even joking you. And I was like, Joel, you're gonna have to get over it. You're gonna have to get over it. You've got to get this down. And so I have the T-Slim insulin pump. So if you guys don't know, right here where it has the white dot, that's where you put insulin in with a syringe and you can pull it out. So that's one feature I really like about the T-Slim. And so I went to go take some of the insulin out, but the needle itself was too big to take insulin out. So at this point, I called my mom. My mom was working a different event at a different um, venue, like five minutes away, and I called her and I was like, Mom, I don't know what I did. I don't know what to do, but my blood sugar is so high and I need to go to the hospital. So she comes over and she's like, I have syringes in the car, let's see what we can do. She comes in and by the time she gets there, my blood sugar is so high my meter can't even read it. And at this point I'm so confused because I've taken so much insulin, I've changed my pump site, I've used a syringe, I have used new insulin, don't know what's happening. So I, my mom gets there, we try to use the syringe, I ended up bending the syringe needle because I was so high I didn't know what I was doing. And... So I was like, Mom, I just need to go to the hospital. I was like, I'm scared to the point that if my blood sugar does start coming down, it's going to go so low that I can't fix it myself because I took so much insulin. And so she was like, all right, let's go to the hospital. So we went to the hospital. I got into the emergency room. They tested my blood sugar. They tested for ketones. I had ketones. They put me directly into a room in the emergency room. They started an IV. The first IV, they left in me for like an hour and it was just not going in. It was not helping. I felt so sick. So they finally put another one in. So I had two going at the same time. And finally I had two bags of um, um, IV fluid. My test results came back and they told me I had like a extremely high level of lactic acid in my body. And that is why... My blood sugar wouldn't come down and I was becoming insulin resistant and which is super weird to me because that has never happened and it hasn't happened since then. I got to the hospital and my, nev my blood sugar never went low and I took more than twice as much of insulin I took like that I take in a regular day. So usually I bolus less than, let's see, I can actually look right now. Let's see how much I usually bolus in a day. So I usually bolus like 22 units of insulin a day and then my basils are at 20. Um, so I don't take that much insulin and I give myself over 80 units of insulin just bolusing in with a syringe. So that kind of explains to you guys that my blood sugar was so high. I finally came back down. I think the lowest I went when I was at the hospital before I left was I think at like 140 three or something, 145-ish, I got home and my blood sugar started going high again. And I didn't know what to do. I took some insulin. I went to bed because I was so tired at this point. I was so exhausted. My body was so weak. And I woke up and I was fine the next day. Like, fine. Like, it never happened. So that is my story of having a scary high blood sugar story. I'm sorry that I don't really have a scary low blood sugar story. Um, because I'd rather be too high than too low, if that makes sense. Um, because for me, it is easier for me to fix a high blood sugar other than in this, just in this story that I just told you about, than to fix a low blood sugar, like at work or in the middle of class or at night or whatever. It, I just feel like it's easier for me to fix a high blood sugar than a low blood sugar.
Alright, well that is it for this week's video. If you enjoy, please give it a big thumbs up. Also be sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell down below because it really helps us out. Also be sure to follow me as well as the other six diabetics on every single social media that we have linked down below. And if you have any low blood sugar story or high blood sugar stories that you'd like to share with me and everybody else on this channel, please be sure to comment down below and we will um, comment back because we love interacting with all of you. So I will see y'all next Friday. Bye guys.